Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video I'm going to introduce to you um, the basics, or just give you a basic introduction of how to create random numbers in Python, or more accurately, pseudo-random numbers, since computers can't really generate random numbers. What they do is they use various algorithms to fake it pretty darn good, um, to where you're pretty close to being random without actually being random. Uh, but anyway, um, so to create these ra these pseudo random numbers, um, I'll just call them random numbers from here on out because it's easier. But in order to do this, we're going to need to use functions that are defined inside of the random module. So at the top of your program, you'll need to import random to uh, use these different functions, right? So uh, first function we'll look at is the rand int function and what that does is generates a random integer within a range, right? So you'll specify that range by passing arguments, um, two arguments, two integers uh, for x and y, right? And the next function we'll look at is the rand range function. And this works similar to the range function for generating sequences. But what happens is, is that um, you generate a range of numbers kind of like how range the range function works and the rand range function is going to pick a number from that sequence right so the rand range function will create a sequence of numbers and then pick one of the numbers from that sequence at random right so you know there's three different versions of rand range and it generates sequences similar to how the range function does it and then just returns one of the numbers from that sequence at random Okay, so the random function, what that does is that is going to generate a um, percentage, right, or a percent number. So some number um, in the range of 0 through 1, right? So it'll return something like, you know, 0 0.02 or 0.3 or something like that, right? So it's going to be um, a decimal number that comes out, okay? And uh, random uniform, that function, that generates uh, a number, a decimal number in between um, some range that you specify with the arguments, okay? Now, by default, each one of these functions, they use the system time, right? The time on your system as the base for their algorithms for generating random numbers, okay? So as I said at the very beginning, computers really can't generate random numbers. What they do is they follow certain algorithms, okay, to generate random numbers to kind of fake it, right? And so those algorithms need a starting point for generating their random numbers. And so that starting point is referred to as a seed, right? And so the functions I've talked about so far, the seed they use, every time you call the function, they use the time for the system, or the system time, the, the clock for your particular system, okay, to generate those numbers. Okay, um, but if you want to create a predictable set of numbers that will be generated every single time, well then you can use the random seed function to, to do that, to kind of override that, right? So if you wanted for some reason to guarantee the same series of numbers for every time you call one of these functions, then you can change the seed to some specific value x and that'll guarantee you will get the same uh, series of random numbers uh, every time, right? So, in this introductory video, we're just going to go through, you know, just a small subset of the functions that are available in the random module. So, you'll want to check the documentation, read up on the random module at python.org uh, for more options. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here. So, if I'm going to generate some random numbers, then as I was saying, I have to import uh, the random module, okay? And then from there, I can access uh, these different functions, right? So, for example, random.randint, right? And if I specify, um, you know, two numbers, say, one and six, okay? What that's going to do is that's going to generate a random number within that range. So let's just 
call the function a few times and see what we get. All right, so I'll just repeat this a few times and we'll see the output. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and run. All right, so we can see, you know, I called this function four times and what did we get? Four, six, two, five, right? So basically like rolling a six-sided die. Okay, so what about the rand range function, right? Well, let me comment on all, all this stuff so that way it's not spamming our screen, but rand range, you know, that's gonna create that sequence of numbers and pick one from that sequence at random. So I could do something like this, uh, rand uh, range, and remember there's three different ways we can use this. We can pass a single argument, we can pass two arguments, or we can pass three. So. I'll pass just one for this first for this first example. So let's see how this looks, right? And I'll, I'll put it in the loops so that way I don't have to copy and paste it. So in range, we'll run the loop ten times to see the numbers that we uh, can get, right? So uh, let's see here. We'll do that, and we will um, put everything on the same line. Okay. So end equals nothing. And Let's go ahead and put a space in between, right? So let's see the numbers that we're going to get. Oops, forgot my colon, All right? So there we go. So 81802436.75, right? So um, created a sequence of numbers going from zero up through, but not including 10. So there's numbers that we saw through, you know, 10 rolls of the dice as it were, right? But we can provide, um, two arguments, right? So if we provide two arguments, go ahead and run it, then what's going to happen is, is that now the sequence of numbers is going to start at five and go up to, but not include 10, just like the range function does. And then it picks one of those numbers from that sequence, right? Um, so let's look at the final example of the rand range function. And that is the three argument version, okay? So with the three argument version, what happens is, is that the third argument specifies the step value, okay? So if I provide these arguments, okay, the sequence of numbers that's gonna get generated that the rand range function will pick from is gonna go from 10 up to, but not including 100, with a increase of 10 each time. So essentially what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a sequence that is 10, 20, right, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, all the way up through 90, right? Because remember, you don't include the last number there, okay? So when we run this, it's gonna pick a number from that sequence, right? And so you can see 60, 90, 60, 80, 40, 20, 50, 30, 40, 80. Okay, so let's comment out that and let's take a look at the random random function, right? So I'll generate 10 numbers from that guy, just like I did before. So random dot random, and we'll see the series of numbers that we get uh, from that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it, All right? So you can see that we get some value, right? Maybe for this, this is so messy, this output, maybe I will put it on several lines. Um, we get some value that is in between zero and one, right? So essentially this is generating percentages, right? So, um, some random percentage from, like I said, from between zero and one, right? Okay. So let's now take a look at that, um, that uniform, uh, function. Okay. So. Do a similar kind of thing here, uh, comment out the old stuff and generate 10 random numbers um, using the function, right? So random.uniform, okay? So I can specify um, a couple arguments here. So I'll say 10, 20, uh, and we'll print out the results just to show you what that looks like, right? So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so you can see from the output here, what we're getting is we're getting 
you know, some number with, you know, the uh, decimal places, right? So it's similar to what we had with random, but, you know, we're getting a number from any kind of number, some, somewhere on the number line between uh, 10 and 20, right? So it's randomly generating all the decimal places um, as well, okay? So the last thing that I want to show you here is how to use random.seed, right? So with random.seed, you can override the different random number generating functions default seed, which again is the system times, the time on your system. They're using that to, do, to start their algorithms for generating random numbers each time. So that way, uh, the sequence of numbers that gets generated would be unpredictable, right? So um, let, me, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here, right? So if I say, um, you know, if I generate 10 numbers, let's say that we're going to generate 10 random integers. We'll use rand int, right? So uh, let's see here, x equals random dot rand int. We'll roll a 10-sided die this time, okay? And print that out on the screen, right, all in one line. So x um, and end equals nothing, right? So I'm going to run this uh, twice. So right, we'll put a we'll put a line in between. Okay. So if I run this, you're gonna see that each time the sequence of numbers is different, right? But if I use the random.seed function and I pick some number, right? So I don't know, uh, 100, okay? And I do that before calling the uh, random number generating function, right? Take a look at the output, right? The same, exact same sequence of numbers gets generated each time, right? Because what I've done is I've said to the algorithm, right? Or I've started the algorithm with the exact same number, that algorithm for generating random numbers, right? So, you know, even if I were to do 20 numbers, look, it's gonna be the exact same every single time, right? So basically what you can imagine, or maybe, you know, if you think about your favorite game that allows you to specify um, a seed value, right? Maybe for Minecraft or something, and there's a particular world that your friend was working on, and then they tell you what the, what the seed was for that world. Well, the random number generator that procedurally generates that world for you, it's doing the same kind of thing. You know, you're specifying the starting point for generating uh, all of the numbers that it needs for creating that world, right? And so you're gonna get a predictable outcome every single time. Well, same thing here. We're telling the random number generator algorithms, hey, start with 100, and then generate all of the subsequent die rolls or, or random numbers based off of that. And so you get the, uh, the exact same outcome every single time. Okay, so as I was saying, those functions are just a small number of functions that are possible in the random module, right? So just wanted to show you, here I am on python.org, and let's go take a look at the random module, right? So if you look inside of here, you know, you can see description of, you know, what the module is all about, but you scroll down, and you can see the different functions, right? So there's random.seed, as we were talking about, um, rand range, which we used, rand int, um, you know, keep on going. You can see all kinds of different options. There's um, functions for shuffling sequences. There's the random function we looked at. There's uniform. So there's all kinds of different uh, functions and examples of using these things that you can review um, on your own. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, Feel free to drop me an email 
or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.